reason I spend a lot of time on pleasant life moments before I go into um, the pleasant events calendar, which is a real strong foundation in the adult MBSR program is that I find that teens need, um, you know, something tangible, a list of things that they engage in that are considered self-care, that are enjoyable, that are pleasant to them, and that they have this tangible list in front of them. One, they're working on the pleasant events calendar over the week, which we'll get to today, and then also just in daily life, like, hey, if I'm feeling kind of crappy, I can, I can do something that makes me feel happy, makes me feel better. So this is very tied to self-care, obviously. Um, uh, the fundamental of mindfulness being ple like noticing pleasant life moments is, is part of, you know, noticing all life moments. And in terms of encouraging stronger mental and physical health, you know, engaging in more pleasant moments would correlate to increased um, physical health and, and mental strength and ability. Um, and so, you know, you can call this an awareness of pleasant experiences, um, an awareness of pleasant life moments, and, and, you know, just really kind of explaining that hopefully by increasing pleasant moments in your life, you're going to be happier. Um, so the, the exercise is to ask teens to what is pleasant to them and to, from the list that will be on the next slide, to pick all, all that apply, circle all that they like, and of those to star the top three to five, and then you have everyone share um, two to three. And that by doing this practice and just going through this list, that hopefully there's increased awareness that there might be a lot of things that they enjoy doing that they didn't realize or didn't pay attention to or were on automatic pilot to. Um, and then it's also information if there aren't a lot of things that they enjoy that maybe they're, you know, the information to us as the instructors, maybe they're depressed, maybe they're not doing very well. And, and how can we help them outside of the group? You know, if we notice that teens, when they're sharing, aren't able to really share, this might be a time where you want to check in with a teen after the group and see if it's, you know, if there are other things they enjoy. It's important when you're offering this list for teens that you provide other um, meaning, like they, they can fill in themselves. So in the workbook 28, page 89, there is a list of many of these pleasant life moments. They're written um, somewhat differently, but uh, most of them are very closely related. So this is a list, a sample that you can give um, a separate handout or you can just use the workbook page or photocopy the workbook page. And so the, they'd mark all the ones that applied and then they would circle, um, they could either mark or circle them and then start, you know, the top three to five and have them share two to three. These are things that change all the time because there's new um, technologies that are coming out. Um, sometimes there's just new things that people are, you know, are involved in that they enjoy. So you'd want to put a couple other, other lines on there. And in the workbook, I believe there are other, a list for other, and then for them to write in what the other thing is that is pleasant. Maybe it's, you know, river rafting, or maybe it's, um, knitting, maybe knitting's already on here, but you never know what's going to be some pleasant to someone. And again, to remind teens that this list is pro-social, pro, um, positive coping, positive in nature and not based on, you know, um, illegal or negative um, life moments, like such that cutting or binge eating or um, extended period of time on Facebook or Instagram, but within the realm of um, what's healthy. So now the hope, the takeaway by doing this is now that hopefully now the teen has a visual of things they can turn to, literally turn to, that feel good, um, they enjoy doing, and that if they're depressed, anxious, or angry, or just exhausted with like 
and, and just overwhelm they can turn to instead of n negative coping skills or behaviors. You don't even need to engage in that conversation of the instead of negative, but it's for you to know that hopefully by them doing more of the positive um, experience, events, moments that they are not going to be, that they will be um, doing less of engaging in negative coping skills. And, um, you know, not all things cost money. And so, you know, that yes, some of these on the list, you know, going to the movies or going shopping are going to require money, but noticing the sun, noticing a flower, um, engaging in a good conversation with a friend is not going to require money. Um, this is a good intervention, as I was already starting to say, to assist teens in completing their pleasant events calendar for the week. And it really does open teens up into discussing, you know, and to recognizing what is pleasant for them. Uh, it also serves as a tool to increase teens' number of pleasant activities they complete during the week. It's important for teens to learn not to categorize their day as all bad or all good, but rather filled with many different moments, all with different balances. And, you know, tie that into the guest house poem of letting all experiences in. So you can weave in when appropriate during the session about bring, being present to all moments. And some of that has already been planted in previous sessions. You've had them, you know, make you know, this list and notice the things that they really find enjoyable to them and then explain the pleasant moments calendar that they'll be doing for the week. Um, something just to, I like to, you know, you can tell teens or just to note a side note for, for yourself is I like the quote Rick Hansen says that we're Teflon to the positive and Velcro to the negative. And I feel like, um, you know, teens need all the help they can at recognizing um, not only recognizing what's pleasant to them in their days, in their week, in their life, um, engaging in it more, recognizing when they're doing it and recognizing what they enjoy, but really to, if we focus on the pleasant, pleasant events calendar for the week, that we're really fighting against um, this Velcro to the negative. And here, is similar to some of the discussion you can have in the pleasant life moments section, but going over the pleasant events calendar, which we will in a second, it's, you know, just this idea, these ideas of how we tend to view our days all good or all bad, but that even in days that we see as, as quote bad, tend to have good or pleasant moments in them if we just look for them or pay attention to them or are open to seeing them. And, you know, explaining that it, it's, very common for and normal that our brain does tend to just categorize things as all black or all white, all good, all bad. And, and it's as it's through this practice, these practices of one engaging in more pleasant life moments and also reporting, recording your on the pleasant events calendar that they can start to see that things aren't so black and white or that they don't have to be that way. So it takes a little bit more of the power out of, oh, this day was just all bad or this day was all good. It's just there's a lot of events. Some will feel more significant and powerful and um, will take up more space in our memory than others. Then again, the last um, bullet on here, noticing all the moments our day can shift this perspective of all or nothing thinking. And this is what the Pleasant Events calendar looks like in its um, workbook 29, page 92 is the actual calendar. And what you want to do is go over this with them and then have them complete one entry per day. So the example here is the event, I passed my driver's test. My emotions or thoughts that go along with that is, I was really stoked, I can't wait to drive to school. What I felt in my body. <clears throat> I had butterflies in my stomach during the test. Afterward, I couldn't stop smiling. What I feel and think now, I am still really happy and can see how it's going to change my life. And they can just, you know, write something very simple. It doesn't have to be um, full sentences, just anything they can remember. They can record it at the end of the day, something that was pleasant to them each day. <clears throat> 